This video is brought to you by Raycon earbuds. These are some of my favorite earbuds I've ever owned, and if you want to learn why, make sure to stick around. I don't think I need to be the one to tell you that th things kind of suck right now. But if there's one tiny bit of good to come out of this that I feel I can help with, it's that we have a little bit more time to watch movies and TV shows. I'm not going to be the person to tell you about the disease or the economy or anything important, but I do know a lot of great movies and TV shows available on streaming services that will definitely take your mind off of things, and if there was ever a way for me to help it's by recommending these. There's a lot to get into, but before we do, I wanna give a quick thank you to this week's sponsor, Raycon. I'm super picky with earbuds. I need to make sure that they sound great, they fit well in my ears, that they last me a while, and that they're affordable. Raycon sent me their everyday E25s, and let me tell you, they check off all of the boxes. The bass sounds absolutely amazing. With the charging case, you can get 24 hours of playtime, and look at how amazing they look in my ears. They got all these different sizing options to fit whatever ear you got. If this ain't your color, they also got blue, red, black, black, pink, you name it. I love the way they fit in my ears so much I've been wearing them everywhere while making a grilled cheese, while working on a video, while doing some push-ups for some reason. My personal favorite part about them is that they are, get this, actually affordable. Oh, and did I mention they're water resistant, which makes them perfect for a good workout? If I'm gonna be completely honest, I really do love these earbuds. They fit nice, they look nice, they sound great, and if you want your own pair, go to buyraycon.com slash karsten to learn more. Right, let's kick things off with In Bruges. This is a Martin McDonough movie starring Colin Farrell, and it is uh, it's pretty fun. It is a hitman movie with a little bit of a comedic twist, not just a little bit, a lot. And like anything by Martin McDonough, it's very unpredictable, which makes for a super fun time. It's available on Amazon Prime with a Cinemax subscription. Next, we have Rear Window, directed by Alfred Hitchcock. As soon as you watch this, you'll realize it's uh, pretty relatable to what's going on here. There's quite a bit of social distancing. It's crucial to the plot. And I gotta say, this is my favorite Alfred Hitchcock movie. It is fantastic, very immersive, very entertaining, super funny with a lot of meaning. It's basically like nothing I've ever seen before. It's available on Amazon with a star subscription and you should definitely check it out. Next we have The Host directed by Bong Joon-ho. This movie is free on YouTube. You could search it right up there and you'll have it. If you loved Parasite, which I'm assuming you did, you're probably gonna love this. It is a great blend of genre. It's got horror, it's got comedy, tons of drama. I will say, if you have a lot of anxiety over what's happening right now, maybe uh, skip this one because it's a little relatable. At the same time, it takes the current situation and brings some optimism into it, which is maybe something we all need. Next is Burning by Lee Chang Dong. I'm recommending this one not only because it's an amazing movie, but because it's long. When I saw this, I saw it in the middle of the day and it took up my entire afternoon. And usually that might not be a great thing, but if you're a teenager and you don't have school, you don't have anything going on, it'll be a great way to spend your day. Not to mention that time will fly by because you'll be hooked with this movie. It's super unpredictable. You have no idea where it's going. The ending is very weird. It's one of the best movies of 2018 and it is available on Netflix. Next we have Ratatouille directed by Brad Bird. Let's face it, you haven't seen this movie in a while. Maybe it's a great time to revisit it. This is in my opinion the most underrated Pixar film maybe the best Pixar film. Now is a great time to watch it, let's be honest. It's available on Disney Plus and you should check it out. Good Time, directed by the Softy Brothers. I'm sure most of you have seen this, but if you haven't and you liked Uncut Gems, check it out. Like Uncut Gems, it's very stressful, it's very immersive, it's got a very interesting style to it. I know you might be looking for something pure or wholesome, and this is definitely not either of those things, but once again, it's stressful, it's immersive, it'll do enough to take your mind off of things for two hours. It's available on Netflix and Amazon Prime. Next we have I Think You Should Leave, the sketch show by Tim Robinson. This is one of my favorite things on Netflix, period. It's very short, each episode is like 15 minutes, I think there's like six episodes, and oh my god, even the worst sketch in this entire thing is better than the best sketch in SNL's last season. This is available on Netflix, and seriously, I highly recommend you check it out. Next we have I, Tanya, the biopic on Tanya Harding, starring Margot Robbie. I'm sure most of you have seen this one as well, and you might be like, why is this a good quarantine movie? If you're looking for just a movie to take your mind off things that isn't crazy stressful or crazy wholesome, this is it. It is available on Hulu. Next we have the Mike Birbiglia stand-up specials. Mike Birbiglia is one of my favorite stand-up comedians and storytellers in general. If you like John Mulaney, you're probably gonna like Mike Birbiglia. I mean, they're friends. Most of his specials are available on Netflix, if not all. I, I no, don't check me on that. My personal favorite is Thank God for Jokes. It's full of meaning, it's full of laughs, 
It's everything you want out of a stand-up special. Next we have Yi Yi, directed by Edward Yang. I'm recommending this one because to a lot of you, it might be your new favorite movie after watching it. Similar to Burning, it is also very long. It takes up about three hours of your day. And yes, it's very slow, quiet, and patient, but through all of that is very thought-provoking. Not only does it take up a lot of your day, but after watching it, you really can't stop thinking about it. It's quite the bang for your buck and it's available on the Criterion channel. Next we have The Beach Bum, directed by Harmony Korine, starring Matthew McConaughey. This is probably the dumbest movie on this list. It's one of the dumbest movies of the last few years, but that's exactly what we need right now. I can't tell you how much I've been craving a movie to just turn my brain off and let it take over. This movie is exactly that. It's hard to get anxious while watching it. It's literally just stupid fun with a great Matthew McConaughey performance. You honestly might hate it, and I'm sorry if you do, but it's available on Hulu, and if you do check it out, let me know what you think. Next, we have Honey Boy, directed by Alma Harrell. I put this one in here because it just deserves your support. It's a movie from last year that I think needed a lot more love than it got. Shia LaBeouf delivers one of the best performances of last year. Lucas Hedges is great as always. I wouldn't call this a feel-good movie, but it'll definitely make you feel a bit better. It's available on Amazon Prime. Next, we have Fantasia, one of the earlier Disney films. I watched this thing for the first time back in January, and I loved it. I thought it was super immersive. It had some of the best animation to come out of Disney that I've ever seen. It's also very long but it's like a nice bath. It feels really refreshing by the end. It's, in my opinion, the best thing on Disney+, Plus. so make sure to check it out. Next, we have The Farewell, directed by Lu Wang. Like Honey Boy, this is a film that I feel deserves way more support than it got. Even though it won a Golden Globe and was critically acclaimed all over the place, I think everyone should have seen this movie because I think everyone would find something about it that they enjoy. It's tackling death and sickness and family issues in a way that feels kind of relevant right now. Next we have Crumb, a documentary by Terry Zwigoff. This is a documentary about Robert Crumb, a very controversial cartoonist. He is a very interesting man, a very weird man, a disturbing man. To me, this is my favorite documentary of all time just because it is insanely interesting. There's so much to say about it that I want to save for maybe a better video in the future, but just check it out, it's on the Criterion channel. Next we have The Thing, directed by John Carpenter. This is a 1982 sci-fi horror movie, and it's one of the best movies of all time. It's about a bunch of scientists in Antarctica who run into some issues at their base camp, and that's about all I'll say. I'll never forget the first time I saw this, where I had to pee the entire movie but never could go because I didn't want to miss what's happening on screen. That alone should tell you that this film is very entertaining and immersive. It's available on Hulu, and if you haven't seen it, what are you doing? Next we have Swiss Army Man, directed by two guys named Daniel. This is a very goofy movie starring Daniel Radcliffe and Paul Dano. Uh, yeah, not much to say about it. Similar to The Beach Bum, it's pretty goofy, it's pretty stupid, uh, but it does have some meaning to it, so check it out on Amazon Prime. Next we have pretty much every Charlie Chaplin movie. Almost all of Chaplin's work is available on the Criterion channel, and I put this in there because it's just a whole lot of fun. Even today, Charlie Chaplin's films are some of the funniest and most entertaining ever done in cinematic history. Even if you disagree with that, they are some of the most relevant and important films in cinematic history, so if you're interested in film, it's worth checking them out. My personal favorite is Modern Times. I was insanely entertained throughout its entire runtime. To me, it is a perfect movie. And like I said, they are all available on the Criterion channel. They're super short, so why not check them out? Next, we have Big Time Adolescence. This is a new movie that just dropped on Hulu. It stars Pete Davidson, and it's one of my favorite coming-of-age stories of the last few years. I know I have a pretty heavy male fan base, I have a pretty heavy high school fan base, and this movie is for that exact demographic. I don't think high school guys get coming-of-age stories that feel like they deal with masculinity the way this does. Personally, I just wish I had a movie like this when I was in high school. It's fun, it's rewatchable, check it out. Next, we have The Favorite, Killing of a Sacred Deer, and Dogtooth, all films directed by Yorgos Lanthimos. I would say his most popular film is The Lobster, which is available on Netflix. If you haven't seen that one, check it out. But if you haven't seen his other work, which are these, they are pretty amazing, and in my opinion, a little bit better than The Lobster. My personal favorite is Killing of a Sacred Deer, available on Prime. It's very disturbing. If you want to see one of the best movies of 2018, there's The Favorite, available on Hulu. And if you want to see one of his earlier films, which is weirdly relatable to what's happening right now, check out Dogtooth, which is available on Amazon with a Fandor subscription. Next, we have Love, directed by Gaspar Noé. I feel weird, uh, recommending this one. If you want the complete opposite of social distancing, uh, check out this. It's pretty crazy. It's available on Netflix. Uh, yeah. Next we have Patterson, directed by Jim Jarmusch. This is a movie about just normal life, uh, which is something maybe some of you miss a little bit. But at the same time, in my opinion, it 
sort of critiques normal living and what that means to the normal person. It's got a great Adam Driver performance. It has tons to unpack and think about. It's available on Amazon Prime. It's one of the best movies of the last decade, in my opinion, and I think everyone should check it out. Next, we have Playtime, directed by Jacques Tati. I've talked about this a little bit in some of my previous videos, but this is one of the most immersive experiences of all time. Once you start watching it, you're in there for the next two hours. The stakes are insanely low. You might think it's really boring, but it's one of the coolest films I've ever seen. And lastly, there is every single Kurosawa film out there. They are all available on the Criterion channel, from what I know, and obviously you should watch them. They're also pretty long, so they'll take up a good part of your day, and even after you finish them, you won't be able to stop thinking about it. My pick as an introduction is Seven Samurai. It's a classic. It's probably the best action movie ever made. If you haven't seen any of his work, what are you doing? And lastly, if none of these satisfy your needs, I have three tips. One, binge a director's work. If you really like a certain filmmaker and want to explore the rest of their filmography, just do that. Find some of their earlier films. Find some of their deep cuts. Two, watch more foreign language films. Now is a great time to explore them. And three, watch a trilogy or series that you've always wanted to get through. For example, I've never seen the Before trilogy and I've never seen The Lord of the Rings. This is go probably going to be the time where I do that. As for a recommendation, I recommend the Three Colors trilogy, available on the Criterion channel. I hope this was at least a little bit helpful. I hope you watch at least some of these films. And if you have any suggestions, make sure to drop them in the comments. I might read them. I probably will. I have nothing going on. Make sure to check out Raycon. Go to buy Raycon com slash Karsten, get your own pair, and okay, that's all I got. I gotta get back to playing Animal Crossing New Horizons on my Nintendo Switch. See you guys in the next one.